and welcome to Right Now Workshop Podcast. I'm your host, Kitty Buholtz, and this is episode 19, How Long Will It Take to Write? Coming to you on Tuesday, January 30th, 2018. So today's episode is coming to you partially because I'm in the middle of teaching my annual time management class for writers called Going the Distance, and we've been talking about how to plan our production schedule, how to know exactly how long it's going to take us to get anything done, because one of the worst things is having so many great plans of things that you want to do, get to the end of the year, see how much isn't done, and feel really bad about yourself, and not even know whether or not you could have done it all this year, or more of it this year, or if you just didn't realize that you had too much stuff on the schedule for the amount of time that you have. So if you're trying to figure out your production schedule, I am going to give you one possible way to figure it out. Now, I'm going to use my own example, but I also want to let you know that, um, like stop this episode sometimes and just think about how this can apply to you, whether you have um, one or more books already written or already published, or if you're still working through the first one, and just give yourself um, a little bit of room when you start your guesstimating, because as you start keeping track of what you're actually getting done, how many days a week you're actually getting writing done, how many hours a day, how many words you're getting done every week, as you start keeping track of that, that's when guesstimating will turn to estimating, which is pretty awesome. Okay, so I'm going to use a little bit of guesstimating because I'm going to try something new this year, but mostly this is going to be estimating. So for instance, this year, um, the first book that I'm going to work on is the next book in the Strays of Loon Lake series. So Love at the Fluff and Fold came out to about 75,000 words, and I like all the books in my series to be approximately the same length for the regular books. I often like to write novellas and short stories and novelettes, which is what I call short stories because really not very many people use that word. So I have really long short stories that are technically novelettes. Anyway, aside, sorry, rabbit trail. And um, I like all of my main books to be about the same length in the series. So let's say that the new book, which is tentatively titled Love at the Clip and Curl, Guess who's the heroine in that book? Yes, Tabitha. <laughs> um, that book is also then going to be around 75,000 words. Now, I just looked up all the rest of the details for what the final published copy of Love at the Fluff and Fold came out to be. So it was 75,000 words broken into 25 chapters, which is an average, not to say this is total. I mean, it's not, it's not true for every single chapter, but the average comes to 3,000 words per chapter. So some chapters are shorter, some were longer. Okay, now, I am not a, fi a fast typist. And for all those people who are saying writing is not about typing, let me just explain that if you like totally get in the flow and you can type 50 words a minute, or if you in an alternate universe, or let's just say your friend, if your friend totally gets in the flow and can type 100 words a minute, then yes, typing does typing speed does make a difference in how much you can get done. I physically can't type, even when I'm in the flow, as fast as some of my friends. So I'm not going to be able to write as many books, as many words. I can't physically do it compared to somebody who can write. I know somebody who writes, uh, types 120 words a minute, which to me is just mind blowing. But I know to somebody who works in a field like maybe um, the legal profession or something like that, I do happen to know a lot of people who work in that field who type so fast. And I'm like, how did you ever learn to do that? <laughs> okay, so somebody who can type faster is going to get more done than me, but the math still works. So for instance, I just have to figure out and this is over, you know, a few years of trying to keep track of it, about how many words do I write in different periods of being in the flow or kind of struggling on a per hour basis. So when I'm struggling, it's like 300 words an hour. It's pretty bad because, you know, you're trying to figure out what am I trying to say? Like, where am I going with this? But if you have not read, uh, and this is not the exact right title, but I'll get it into the show notes. Uh, two two thousand to ten k, 
2 to 10K, something like that, by Rachel Aaron, R-A-C-H-E-L-A-A-R-O-N. This is a great book on how to help you to clarify your thinking about the next scene that you write before you write it so that by the time you are like ready to sit down and type or whatever kind of writing you're going to do, um, you actually are so clear about what you're doing that you're into the flow like way quicker. And it really does help you to write, type, however you want to say it, much faster. So when I'm using that method, and it's a great book, you should just go buy it, um, and, and I'm getting into the flow of the scene a lot quicker, then I can usually get up to around 1,000, sometimes 1,100 um, words in an hour. So, you know, feeling pretty awesome and excited about that. But overall, my average is 500 to 750 words per hour over the course of the entire book. Okay, now, if you look at... Um, the new thing that I have just been learning to do over um, 2017 and what I'm determined to work on, even though I know whenever you learn something new, you have to, it's just going to take longer. You're going to slow down. You're going to get less done until you really learn it. And then hopefully we'll get a lot of speed. So what am I talking about? Yes, dictation. Only when I finally figured out the difference between dictation and transcription, which I owe that to um, Scott, I really, I wasn't planning on saying his names now. <laughs> I didn't write it down to tell you. I will put a link to Scott's, uh, it's the School of Training Your Dragon or something like that. Anyway, so I'm in this great class by Scott, uh, <laughs> um, who has created a class for novelists who want to learn to use um, Dragon Naturally Speaking for PC or Dragon Dictate for Mac to learn to dictate and or transcribe their book. That was the first time that I really understood the difference between dictation and transcription. This is just my explanation of it. Dictation is me using the speaker on my computer and speaking what I'm trying to say as it types along with me. Now, the problem with that is I can't keep my eyes from watching it, and then I get kind of stuck on what it's typing versus what I'm saying, and sometimes it's, you know, four or five or ten words behind me, and then I just lose my train of thought, and I get really frustrated, and I just quit. But transcription is using your handy-dandy, um, I almost said calculator, I am just crazy today, <laughs> using your handy-dandy uh, tape recorder or some other tape recording, you know, we say tape recorder, but it's digital recorder or some other recording device and recording your thoughts into it, basically just speaking it out loud to yourself, which depending on how verbal you are, I'm pretty sure this is going to end up being easy for me. So I am going to, so when I started learning the difference between dictation and transcription, and then I started practicing and I realized I can really do great at transcription. At one point I was um, just, you know, I had to find something to, to work on as a, as a pretend exercise. And so there was this thing that I had to answer a question. So I answered it into the uh, digital tape recorder instead. Sorry, digital recorder. Um, and uh, in nine minutes, it came out to 1,100 words nine minutes. Oh my gosh, that's normally at least an hour of typing for me. So as you can imagine, I was totally excited and totally all about wanting to learn how to do this better for fiction. So it's going to be different from, you know, answering a question or just speaking out loud about something. Um, but I am determined to use this transcription this year to get my first drafts out. Now, based on... Um, me trying to work a little bit on fiction already and things that I have done as exercises that are more kind of nonfiction or just off the cuff speaking, which as you can tell, <laughs> I don't have any problem with off the cuff speaking. Um, I am figuring that I should be able to get 3000 words in two to three hours. So that means that if I were to type it, it would probably take me three to six hours to get a chapter out, which is about 
3,000 words in my average that I'm doing for this particular series. For transcription, I'm giving myself some time because it's going to take some time for me to sit and stare at the ceiling and try to figure out, okay, what is it that this story is about? I'm going to use some of the um, method in the uh, 2 to 10K by Rachel Aaron and really organize my thoughts before I start speaking them into the tape recorder. And I figure that all of that all together, I'm guessing... I'm guesstimating, I should say, um, that probably two to three hours per chapter. So I could conceivably cut my time down by half, or another way to look at it is get twice as much done in the same amount of time. All right, so that was the first part. Trying to figure out how much you would normally type uh, per hour, how much you think that probably is the average that you would do words per chapter. Or if you don't know anything about the chapters, don't worry about it. If you're thinking um, books in this genre usually run 60,000 words or 80,000 or 100,000 words, then you can say, okay, so my book, I'm, I'm going to shoot for 90 to 100 because urban fantasy, you know, it's around 100. So I'm going to make sure my book is at least 90. <laughs> so then you would be breaking it down <clears throat> and trying to figure out how much you think that you could type in an average hour. And again, I use it from uh, averaging in both the time that I'm staring at the ceiling, having no idea what I'm doing, which is usually the first chapter or two, um, right up through the end where you're racing through it because you know exactly what's happening and you're just trying to get it out as fast as you can while you still have it in your head. Okay, so how many words do you think that your book is going to be? Write that down. All right, are you going to type it? Do you have any idea what your typing speed is? Write that down. You can do some division here then and figure out approximately how many hours it would probably take you to type that many words. And again, we're making some assumptions about how well you know the story before you start typing. We're going to have to add in some time for staring at the ceiling and thinking about it, that sort of thing. Though some of that staring at the ceiling and brainstorming and stuff is going to happen when you're cooking dinner or washing dishes or folding laundry and that sort of thing as well. So make sure you always have a little notepad with you. Okay, so again, just using my book as as an example, I'm going to guess that Love at the Clip and Curl, running at around 75,000 words, is going to take me to get a first draft only done around 75 hours. Why is that? Because if it takes three to six hours probably for me to type 3,000 words, which is a chapter, or two to three hours probably to transcribe a chapter of 3,000 words, and and my book is going to have around 25 chapters, then three hours times 25 chapters is 75 hours. I hope... I hope that I'm not confusing with you with the math. I know some writers really, really, really hate to use the math. And if so, that's okay. See what you can take out of this. But if you're one of those people who are like trying to plan out literally how long is it going to take you so that you can create a production schedule and see what's a really solid number of books, titles, words, however you want to count it out this year, what can you really get done this year and not just a pipe dream or total guessing without having any idea, that's what I want to help you with. Okay, so first draft, around 75 hours. So then the next question is, how often am I going to be able to write? About how many hours do I think I'm going to be able to write per session? And so how long will it take me to get 75 hours done? Well, I've got a lot of things going on in my life, including quite possibly a move coming up very, very soon. So excluding the portion of time where I'm literally probably going to not be writing at all and uh, and be moving and packing and you know, everything that has to do with moving, then I'm guessing that I could probably... Uh, and sometimes you want to make these plans according to something that is... Um, is a means of success. So I decided to to give myself more time, um, more kind of more compassionate space in the in the time calendar budget here. Um, so I'm saying I'm going to try for one chapter a day, three days a week. Okay, so that means that if I'm going to write a chapter a day, that's two to six hours, depending on how much of it is transcription, how much of it is typing, how much of the time I'm staring at the ceiling versus, you know, have you ever been at the end of your book and you just literally cannot type fast enough for all the words to come out and it's 
amazing and it's totally like in the flow. Okay, so averaging all that out though, I'm thinking a chapter per day, three days a week because I also have the podcast and some teaching and other things that need to be done. So then that comes out to like eight and a third weeks. So let's just call it eight to nine weeks or around two months. So aside from the time that I'm not really working on it because I'm moving, I'm thinking that the next book, I should be able to get the first draft out in two months. Now for me, because um, I was just telling you on Sunday that I have a lot of things going on in my life. Uh, I move a lot because of my husband's job and other reasons. Um, There is just a lot of other things going on besides writing in my life. And so I have not had very many periods where I can just sit down and focus on writing a book. So it has been ages since I got a book first draft written in just a few months. Um, I'm really looking forward to it as a matter of fact. But I'm also trying to give myself some grace here, some room, some wiggle room for if I forget that there are things that always come up when I'm writing a first draft. And I just can't remember because, you know, it's been ages since I worked on the last first draft. So think about all these different factors when you're trying to figure out what your Um, amount of time is that you think it'll take you for your next first draft. Um, If you've never written one before, then I would say just start out by deciding how often you can try to write and for how many hours or minutes or whatever. Um, Or start by saying I'm going to write 300 words a day or 500 words a day or something like that. 500 words a day is only two double spaced pages. So that's kind of good to know. Um, So whatever it is, however you want to go about trying to figure out your schedule, there's going to be a portion of time that you just need to, to keep track of it. Then you'll have something where the guessing becomes guesstimating. And then the more you get done, the guesstimating becomes actual estimating. So I am estimating because I have the math in front of me, but also slightly guesstimating this two-month period because I may not remember other things that come up during the process that, you know, slow me down or whatever. Or maybe something will come up that I'll be like, holy cow, that really speeded things up. Do I remember this happening before? And again, remember I told you about the Dunn journal? Um, You know, taking one of those blank books or blank journals that you've got laying around, or if not, going and finding one, and keeping track of what you do every day having to do with your writing or your writing business. So I'll help you with the IRS to prove that it's not a hobby. Um, It'll also help you to know how long it takes you to get things done. How many hours does it take you to, you know, write a first draft, work on an outline? How many hours do you brainstorm an outline before you start writing page one? This is very, very good information because you don't want to forget that piece. Or you might think, oh, if I write, you know, a first draft in two months, I can write six first drafts in a year. Hmm. Maybe, probably not, because don't you need to use some of that time to do some brainstorming, you know, depending on whether you're a a plotter or a pantser, you know, maybe you're going to do some plotting and some outlining, Um, you might be doing some research, Um, plus just things come up in life, you know, you have family vacations and um, holidays and all sorts of reasons, so you need to be careful when looking at the numbers that you're not overestimating and then kind of not really setting yourself up for failure, but setting yourself up for disappointment. You don't want to be disappointed at the end of every year. That's what my class is about, is helping you to figure out what can I actually get done. And sometimes you want to give yourself some grace and pad your calendar a little bit so that you can be sure that you're going to give yourself a goal that has success in it. So for instance, I might tell myself, okay, the math says I should be able to finish Love at the Clip and Curl in about two months. I'm going to give myself three because I want to make sure that I feel like I was a success. And if I finish early, thank you, God. (laughs) 
but also sometimes you're in a place where you're like, you know what, I've been doing really well, but I've also been kind of screwing around a little bit. What if I worked just a little bit harder and I'm going to close that gap? I'm going to bring it down. And it, you know, the math says 8.3 weeks. So let's make it eight weeks. Let's say, come on, really, let's get this thing done. And, um, and what you want to do in that case, the, the point of it, your focus is to get it done, but to also push yourself. So usually you're in one of two places. You're in a place where you feel confident and you want to push yourself, or you're in a place where what you really need to do is make sure you're giving yourself a success and you want to cushion that time, pad that time a little bit. I hope this has helped you. I'm excited because now because of you, I already have sort of a rough idea of when um, Love at the Clip and Curl will be done. Very excited. My readers will be happy. And, uh, you know, talking about writing always, doesn't it always make you happy and make you go, okay, now I just really need to stop listening to this podcast and get to it because that's how I feel when I'm listening to writing podcasts or talking to writing friends or having my accountability call with a couple of my other friends. Um, we call ourselves the Fab Four uh, with three other writing friends. So whatever it does, whatever it takes for you to feel excited about your writing. And if the math is making you a little seasick, don't worry about the math. Think about the concepts behind it and give yourself some idea of when do you think that you might be able to finish this rough draft. If you've been working on the same book for 10 years, let's make a plan that you're going to finish it by the end of the year. I've got a client that that's what we're working on. And in fact, she started getting excited enough about how things are finally beginning to come together because we're having weekly accountability calls where she tells me her goal. And then the next week, she tells me whether or not she met it. I help her to make reasonable goals that she can meet. Uh, she's doing more writing a lot of times within a few hours of our call because she's like, I'm going to have a call and she's going to ask me what I got done. If you can find somebody like that in your life, do it. It will energize you. It'll help you to get more done. And that sense of accomplishment every week, or even if you only accomplish your goals two weeks out of four, I mean, think of how much better it'll make you feel. And also, if you know that you're setting goals that you will reach, you will succeed, that will make you feel even better than the idea of uh, hoping that you'll get seven books out this month, this year, this month. I'm crazy. <laughs> and remember, if you're listening to this on iTunes or watching on the YouTube channel, you can hit the subscribe button if you hadn't, if you haven't already, and you'll be notified every time there's a new episode. And also, it would be awesome if you left me a review in iTunes. Um, it helps other people to know if this is the kind of show that would help them. And also, if this is helping you, please tell your friends, the friends that you think that listening to this would also help them. I really, 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 that's why I'm doing this. Um, you know, I... It's not a money-making proposition for me. I'm not doing it uh, to be famous or anything. I really want to help people. So if you know some other people that you think that these uh, Right Now Workshop podcast episodes can help, please let them know. I hope this has helped. I'm excited. I can't wait to talk to you about what your writing is, is doing next week. So um, have a great week. Happy writing. Get to it. I'll stop talking and uh, get ready for the interview on Thursday. It is going to be a fun one. All right. Have a good one. Go write. Thank you.